Welcome to Electro Online. When I saw the next problem on the list, one we're going to talk about now, I was really surprised. Surprised in a way where the length of the written text in the problem was absolutely enormous. I didn't write everything down. It would probably have covered most of the board. So I kind of paraphrased some things and I shortened some things. But essentially, the problem was extremely long. It would probably take you two or three minutes just to read it. And then on top of that, it's a very strange type of problem where you'd sit there and go, I really don't know what they're talking about. Well, let's read the problem, at least the part that I wrote on the board, to see what I'm talking about. It does deal with dipoles and induced current. So we have a special metal S conducts electricity without any resistance. A closed wire loop made of S does not allow any change in flux through itself by inducing a suitable current to generate a compensating flux. The induced current in the loop cannot decay due to its zero resistance. This current gives rise to magnetic moment which in turn repels the source of the magnetic field or flux. A magnetic dipole of moment M is brought along the axis of this loop from infinity to a distance R which is much much greater than A where A is the radius of the loop. The magnitude of the dipole's magnetic field is mu sub naught M over 2 pi R cubed. The magnitude of the force between the two magnetic dipoles with moments M1 and M2 is K M1 M2 divided by R to the fourth. And then the question is, the current induced in the loop will be proportional to, and they give you four possible answers. They also were nice enough to give you a little bit of a diagram. So here's the loop made of metal S, which has no resistance. It has radius A. There's a dipole that's being brought from infinity down to a distance R. And from that, we can conclude two things. That the dipole's magnetic field is equal to this, and that the force between the dipole moment made from, made from the small moment, uh, or are caused by the small loop and the dipole moment of the, the one that we bring in close, M1 and M2, the force between them will be equal to that. So, that given, how do we determine the induced current in the loop? Well, we just have to go back to our basics. We understand that the induced voltage, remember, the EMF induced, by definition, is equal to the negative change in the magnetic flux over time. That's by definition. But in other words, it is equal to the negative area times the change in the B field over time. And of course, we don't really care about the negative because we just want the magnitude because we're asking for the magnitude of force. So we can just go ahead and get rid of the negative sign. So, what is the area? Well, the area of the loop is simply uh, pi r squared, or in this case, pi a squared, because the radius of the loop is a, so that's the area. And the change in magnetic field will simply be the B field final minus the B field initial. But initially, the dipole was at infinity, so we could say that this is simply equal to zero, and the final is given equal to this. So that means that this is equal to pi a squared times the magnetic field, which is mu sub naught m over 2 pi r cubed. And then, of course, we realize that the induced current, I induced, is simply going to be equal to the EMF induced divided by the resistance. So in this case, that's going to be pi a squared divided by the resistance times mu sub naught m divided by 2 pi r cubed. And notice that all of this is going to be constant. Pi, a, mu sub naught, r, 2 pi, all constant. And the only thing that is dependent on the circumstances, on the components used, is the magnetic dipole and the radius, which is now r cubed. So you can see that the only thing that matters, everything else is a constant, so we can then say that I induced should be proportional to m over r cubed. And when you look at the possible answers, you can say that a is the only one that has that. What troubles me a little bit is that the induced current is indeed emf over r, but r is supposed to be zero. So that kind of makes you feel uncomfortable. And at least they say that it will build up its own flux to, to compensate for the induced EMF change. 
So, but again, I'm looking at this problem and I'm going, it's an unrealistic problem. There's no such thing as zero resistance, even though they claim it has zero resistance. It kind of misses us up here. But if you just keep to the basics and realize that EMF induced is equal to this, which essentially is the area of the loop times the change of the B field with respect to time, and we can assume that that's going to be equal to this quantity right here, and that I induced is simply EMF induced divided by R, and there goes the ratio, so it can be a, a one minute problem once you realize what's going on, and of course you spend at least two or three minutes reading the problem, but that is how it's done.